Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. I am Nick, your Pada Youth Ambassador. I have a quick announce announcement for all, as this is the first webinar that I'm holding as the Youth Ambassador. I was very excited and nervous that I forgot to record the introduction part of the webinar. So I sincerely apologize, and I am here today to record myself once again to properly welcome you to our Pada Youth webinar entitled SDG Focus Youth Studies. I am personally very excited for this webinar we, as we have invited two young researchers from our very own Pada Youth community to talk about their studies regarding specific sustainable development goals. In today's webinar, we'll be focusing on highlighting youth initiatives in our own community. And some of the key questions we'll be tackling today are, how can youth contribute to the SDGs? And what can we do on our level of reach? Now here's the agenda and what we'll be covering for today. I'll be introducing, I'll be introducing to you our guest speakers Then we'll be having the first presentation from Ru Jun Zhao, followed by a Q&A session. Then we'll have our second presentation by Smitha Amaral Mohanan, also followed by a Q&A session. And then we'll be concluding our webinar. Each presentation is 15 minutes long, and they are both jam-packed with interesting research that our speakers are studying in regards to the specific sustainable development goals. Now on to our first presentation of the day. May I please welcome to stage Vicon. Rujun Zhao, also known as Vicon, is a student studying at HNU ASU Joint International Tourism College and is a previous intern at the PADA membership department. During her internship, she participated in the International Women's Day 2022 marketing campaign under the theme of Break the Bias with a quote, a world where difference is valued and celebrated. With her interest in gender equality, as a research assistant at her current institution, she recently co-wrote a research on gender discrimination and contributed to the fifth global tourism and hospitality conference hosted by the Hong Kong Polytechnic University as one of the presenters. So Beacon, I would like to give the floor to you now. Please say a few words to our audience and you may kickstart with the presentation for us. Thank you so much. As early as the survey report on current situation of Chinese women's workplace released by Jumping Limited in 2017, 76% of respondents said they feel gender discrimination in employment to a certain extent, and 22% of women believe there was a serious gender discrimination in the process of employment. And next, I will introduce the literature review. We look up amounts of current um, research papers. Researchers usually um, trace the stereotypes, preferences, and biases of gender issues in the tourism and hotel industry, and mainly concentrate on the process of recruitment and promotion. After we read the journal papers from in database of MRA, CNKI, et cetera, et cetera. In some cases of hotel industry, there is exactly existing gender discrimination and segmentation in positions, which was highly influenced by the former cultural and social convention on Chinese mainland. And in the recruitment section, some employees said some invisible condition which form invisible gender discrimination from pre-entrance. And from the perspective of rejective female candidates, to a large portion is occupied by female can, um, employees, there is still low occupies in executive managerial team. And then we conduct our research through interview, uh, interviews. We invite seven interviewees and three from the university and four from the hotel industry in the Chinese mainland. And all of them have working experience or still working in the hotel industry. 
two set of questionnaires in the hotel um um two set of questionnaires were designed for them set a is invisible gender discrimination does exist in the hotel industry set b is invisible gender discrimination does not exist in the hotel industry and as for the demographic characteristic of interviewees four males and five uh, and three females cover different education contexts high school diplomas bachelor's degree and doctorate's degree, and their affinity is various and not only in Asia. Their former or current working departments are also diverse, so the result of the interviews would be open and valued to some extent. And here is the result. The majority of the interviewees did not believe that there was invisible gender discrimination in the hotel industry. Though they acknowledged that there was a clear gender preferences um, in the hotel industry, they believed that males are more resistant to stress and females are more attentive. And the hotel will recruit based on this masculinity or femininity which they claim will help give guests a more comfortable experience and benefit the hotel industry. And of those surveys, three interviewees thought there was invisible gender discrimination in the hotel industry. They state that hotel asked about the marriage and bearing status of female applicants during recruitment process and acknowledge that marriage and bearing status has an impact on the workplace and the interviewees acknowledge that um, this is dominant in some specific departments such as safety security department engineering department and um, these two departments um there are a majority of male uh, of male employees in these two um, departments, and there is a majority of female in the housekeeping department. From the interviewees response, um, during the interviewees, some interview uh, during the interview, some interviewees mentioned plenty of departments with imbalanced gender ratio, which did not attract the public attention, um, such as culinary, blossom room, stewarding department. And gender preference can lead to gender biases and discrimination. For us to achieve SDGs, we need to identify the differences between gender preference and gender discrimination. And gender preference is under the requirement of the job description, but gender discrimination is a serious problem. And here is the recommendation. In 2019, a new law has passed in regards to the banning of questioning female candidates of their metro and childbearing status. Companies um, are recruited because they had to shelter the paid maternity leave. And Chinese government supports employers for maternity pay leave. And I have some suggestion to the luxury hotels. The luxury hotels need needs to promote gender diversity and give equal opportunity for all genders. And the results from the interviewees' responses, it can be concluded that though there are cases of invisible gender discrimination in the hotel industry, and many people working and researching in the industry acknowledge the existence of these cases. They do not believe that there is a widespread of invisible gender discrimination in the hotel industry. On the contrary, they believe that these cases are reasonable and beneficial to the hotel industry. And during the interviews, all the interviewees emphasize the importance of working ability and adaptability to the job positions in the hotel industry. 
gender preferences might be the consideration in some special cases. However, in the processes of recruitment and promotion, adaptability, working ability, and stress tolerance are more vital than gender. And um, this study also has some, uh, has some uh, limitations. So we managed to interview partitioners from various departments in the hotel industry and ensure the reliability. The number of the interviewees is still very small. And additionally, all the interviewees' industrial backgrounds are concentrated in luxury hotel. Well, there is no doubt that um, there, is, um, there are differences between the budget hotel and the luxury hotel. And ultimately, the hotels of the sample are mainly located in Chinese mainland. So I hope the future research could take the partitioners from budget or economy hotels into consideration. And I recommend it to replicate this study um, with the partitioners of a variety of departments in budget hotels. And it would be recommended to conduct this study in other countries or region. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have uh, more questions or you are interested in this study, and um, I will share my email address in the chat box with you all. And thank you very much. Thank you, Vikon, for such a great presentation. Um, it is quite a sensitive topic and also one of the major issues in the tourism industry as well. And I am sure that audience was able to learn a thing or two from this presentation. And I also believe that we have some questions for you, actually. So uh, the first question I have from the audience is, Gender identity has been one of the biggest issues in our society lately. As your research has studied on SDG number five, which is gender equality, do you think people with different gender identities, such as non-binary, should also be highlighted in terms of gender, gender equality as well under SDG number five? Yes, it goes without saying that. Now, um... Um, in Chinese mainland, gender identity um, has been discussed by um, a certain number of people. So from my perspective, I think some um, people with different gender identities um, should be highlighted in the terms of gender equality as well. Yes, without doubt. Thank you for that. Um, next question. Um, so during your study and when you were interviewing uh, professionals in the hospitality industry, were you able to notice any reverse gender discrimination against men? Yes. Um, actually, during the interview, some males uh, interviewees, they said um, um, in the current situation, when it comes to gender inequality, um, people are likely to focus more on the treatment of females, but sometimes they maybe um, ignore the treatment of males. So um, in some hotels, um, it's quite hard for men to get the, get the position in the housekeeping department, blossom room department, um, stewarding department. So um, yes, the reverse gender discrimination against men is exist. Yeah, I think it's important to work towards women empowerment, but I think balance between uh, women empowerment and still considering uh, reverse gender discrimination against men is very important as well. Thank you for yeah. your answer, Vikon. Uh, next question yeah. that we have, next question we have is uh, another one from the audience. Uh, Vikon, have you experienced any discrimination, um, gender discrimination during your internship? Oh, yeah. Um, um, sorry, can you um, repeat the question? Oh, yes, sure. Um, in the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that this is a study from your personal interest from your internship yeah. and our audience is um, asking or interested in knowing if you have experienced any disc uh, gender discrimination during uh, your internship. Well, fortunately, I didn't um, feel any gender discrimination um, 
I didn't feel any visible gender discrimination during my internship um, during my internship in this luxury hotel. But actually, I think that's because um, I had my internship for just um, three months. So I have not um, I have uh, I didn't have enough time to feel the there is um, um, invisible or visible gender discrimination or not. So, um, but I also noticed a weird um, situation. Why all the secretaries of all the departments are females and why there is just one um, female in the engineering department? So I will ask myself, um, is it a kind of um, gender discrimination? So I need to do more research and yes, and feel and experience more. So I can answer this question. So I I am hearing that she hasn't uh, you haven't personally experienced gender discrimination against you, but you noticed what some incidents and cons, uh, conditions in the workplace that might be considered as gender discrimination. Yes. Okay, thank you for that. Um, next question that we have is, if you were given the chance uh, with the support and budget and time, how would you improve, uh, improve on this study and take it to the next level? Well, actually, um, um, the, um, this study I've just uh, inter I have just invited um seven interviewees. So um, if in the future I have um another opportunity or other chance, I will um invite more interviewees. You know, um, although I interviewed uh interviewees from Africa, South Korea, um, China and et cetera, et cetera, in many countries. I think I need to invite more interviewees to know about the situation, to know about the invisible gender discrimination in Europe, America, um, Oceania, et cetera, et cetera. So if um, I have this um, opportunity in the future, I will interview, I think I will interview more than um, 12 interviewees in the future. Thank you for that, Vikram. We have a new question from the audience um, asking about um, if there are any organizations in the tourism industry uh, is doing good practice or best practice on their marketing campaigns uh, to achieve gender equality. And um, as I mentioned in the introduction of Vikram, she has participated in the International Women, Women's Day 2022 marketing campaign from PADA. So maybe you can talk a little detail about the marketing campaign that you were able to join when you were working for PADA? Well, actually, when I work in PADA, I feel the atmosphere is very equal and we help each other. And um, I love the I love the marketing campaign um, from the marketing team in the um, on the International Women's Day. We've take the um, we've taken the photos, break the bias, and post into um, a lot of social media. Sorry, everyone. I think Vikon is going through a technical difficulty. Vikon, are you back? Yes, I'm back. Okay. Um, I think uh, you got cut off when you were mentioning about the marketing campaign that you joined. Yes, and we post this photo, and we also write some article to um um for the um tourism destinations um of gender equality, right? Um. So I think um. This um um is helpful to attract the to attract the uh, attract more people to join in the campaign of um gender equality is very helpful to to attract the public attention. Thank you for sharing, Vikon. Um, another question here is um. Were you able to, um, in your study, in your research study, were you able to 
um, interviewed the interviewees on gender discrimination um, in regards to their compensation, such as um, salary rate or um, any compensations that they get from the from the job. Um, I have experience. Oh, uh, I think maybe I saw the I saw the question of. I can repeat the question for you, uh, Vikon. Oh. Uh, so, the question was: uh, During your study, during your interviews, were you able to uh, research or conduct interviews regarding uh, gender discrimination oh, I, I, in I regards get it. Oh. to yeah? Thank you. Uh, thank you. In regards um, to actually, compensation, I yeah. work in the um, human resource department under the um, CMB section. So I know um, the salary are different, but it's not owing. Um, it's not owing to the gender. It's owing to the adaptability and the uh, and their ability. It's not owing to the gender. Thank you for that, Vikon. I think um, our industry, tourism industry, is really evolving and working towards uh, sustainable development goals, uh, especially gender equality. And I don't think uh, it is really visible um, in terms of gender discrimination in regards to uh, compensations. Uh, it, it is more on the ability of the individual that really depends for the compensation in the tourism industry. So uh, yeah. for our last questions, uh, we have, uh, since we are talking to the youth, our, our main audience here in this webinar is our youth who are um, young professionals or who are uh, aspiring to be future leaders in the tourism industry. And how do you think youth can contribute in eliminating gender equality and discrimination in the tourism industry? Well, um, from my perspective, our um, we are the young people, and um, we have um, a lot of platforms such as um, university, college, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have such platform to um, to experience um, more. Um, so we need to um, speak for the gender equality in this platform. And um, as the university student, I have many um, opportunities to um, be the Chinese in a hotel in Pata, such as um, the international organization. So um, we need to we need to write some some articles and um, learn more about gender equality and uh, use the social media platform to um, to show our opinion to all um, to the people from all over the world and let them know the importance um, of gender equality. And also we can do some research um, such like, um, um, we need to do some research and do some study and we can post this research and study um, on the social media platform or on the international conference to attract the public attention, yeah. Thank you, Vikon. Um, I think it is. Uh, I think what you mentioned is very important. So, uh, youth today can uh, learn about SDGs and uh, importance about gender equality through uh, webinars like this that Party Youth holds or other um, events that emphasizes on gender equality. And then, um, if you guys are really interested in changing the perception of the industry, then. I think uh, it is recommended for our audiences to uh, conduct a research, uh, just like how our speakers have done and shown initiative to uh, work towards the sustainable development goals that they believe in. So thank you, Vicon, for your valuable insights. Thank we you truly much, appreciate and it. Thanks, Pata. And everyone, I will, uh, will share my email address on the chat board. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Vikon. So now moving on to our second speaker of the day. For our second speaker, we have Smitha Amaril Mohanan. Smitha is a student at the School of Business Studies and Social Sciences at Christ University. She has participated in two international conferences and presented papers on 
building strategic resilience to control pollution by incorporating best practices from tourism sector and role of community participation in community-based ecotourism ventures. Smeda's vision is to help rural women who live in vulnerable situations through tourism by seeking the possibilities and opportunities in the field, which would enable them to have a better quality of life. So Smeda, thank you as well for joining us today. Would, like to, um, would you like to say a few words to the audience and begin your presentation? Uh, thank you, Pata, for inviting me uh, for this, uh, 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 giving me this opportunity. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants from uh, different uh, countries. Uh, let me uh, share my slide. Is my uh, slide is visible, Nick? Yes, it's all good to go. Thank you. Today, uh, the topic we are going to discuss is uh, the bamboo, the green gold, is strategic uh, resilient to controlled pollution and uh, community development in tourism industry. Today, our agenda is interdiction, benefits of bamboo, the green gold, interconnecting bamboo with tourism industry. Here we are discussing a case study on Uruvu organization at a district in Wayanad in uh, Wayanad district and uh, in Kerala, India. Finally, uh, we are discuss, uh, discussing a proposed model uh, connecting tourism industry with SDGs and bamboo, the green gold. Introduction to the study. Under this topic, we are discussing only uh, how, mainly how the SDGs can be attained individually and by involving the communities actively. Sustainable tourism goals are not only UN's goals, but all individuals' goals. It is, it is the responsibility of each individual who resides in this earth. Here we discuss how an organization may involve it will mold a community to attain SDGs by benefiting the community psychologically and economically through a case study. Also, I'm suggesting a model to connect the tourism industry with SDGs uh, through bamboo. Here I have chosen bamboo, the green gold, as a renewable energy resource to interconnect tourism and SDGs. Why have I have chosen bamboo? Because bamboo is grown in all continents except Europe and uh, Antarctica. Now bamboo has been introduced in Europe and bamboo is considered to be the fastest growing plant. These both factors made me to accept bamboo as a renewable resource. The SDGs focused in the studies are SDG 8, Design Work and Economic Growth, SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, and SDG 13, Climate Action. Here we go through the benefits of bamboo, the green gold. China is one of the countries with largest area of bamboo forest. Important benefits of bamboo include carbon sequestration. Here, the bamboo has the benefit to absorb the atmospheric carbon dioxide and convert into organic carbon. And bamboo buildings and constructions uh, are very uh, environmental friendly and it is used in construction field instead of non-renewable resources like concrete and steels. Bamboo uh, shoots are rich with vitamins and it is a very good antioxidant. Bamboo shoots have high medicinal values, such as uh, it reduces hypothyroidism and uh, uh, fight against uh, spreading of cancer cells. The fermented bamboo shoots are referred as green gold. Bamboo juice extracted from cooked leaves have high medicinal value. 
bamboo handicrafts are very beautiful and biodegradable also. Bamboo is benefited to the community and it uplifts the community to economically and psychologically. Here we interconnect bamboo with tourism. We will go in detail how the bamboo is interconnected with tourism. Bamboo supports ecotourism and community-based ecotourism. The individual bamboo farmers can form a cooperative society which would help to sustain the marketplaces, avoid competition and increase the bamboo farmers economic, economically benefited. Promoting ecotourism and community-based ecotourism will reduce the poverty and help the uh, community to uplift. The ecotourism destination with bamboo can be used for bamboo forest therapy. Construction and tourism industry, bamboo huts, resorts, and construction will attract tourists and protect the environment. Furniture and interior decorators, uh, decorations made out of bamboo will help to reduce the carbon emissions. Harmful paints can be avoided by using natural bamboo, bamboo table mats, blinds, and uh, interiors can be used in tourism building constructions. Bamboo crockery and cutlery can incorporate in restoring uh, sector instead of steels and plastics. Tourist boats are one of the threats to uh, aquatic flora and fauna. This can be replaced by bamboo coracles, bamboo boats, and bamboo bridges. Bamboo tissues are uh, if it is very uh, environment friendly, it can be incorporated in tourism industry. Bamboo interiors attracts both domestic and uh, uh, international tourists. Here we discuss in detail a case study on Uravu project, which is situated in Wayanad district of Kerala, India. Uravu is a non-profit bamboo-based development organization established in 1996. Uravu Indigenous Science and Technology Center, commonly known as Uravu. Uravu strives for rural employment through sustainable development. Uravu concentrating on bamboo interiors and bamboo constructions. These are the vision and mission of Uravu organization. These are the Uravu partners. Here we go uh, in detail the activities and products of Uravu. Uravu Bamboo Constructions. Uravu is concentrating on bamboo interiors and bamboo construction, which leads to promote sustainable architecture and green buildings. Uravu Bamboo Nursery. Nursery is with more than 50 species commercially available in their firm. Their nursery is the largest in South India in terms of variety of species. Uravu supporting rural women. Its development is skill problem, the skill development programs and livelihood support program, which provides employment to more than 100 rural women. Bamboo uh, products, they have a exclusive collection of bamboo products, which is more than 500 varieties of products. So here you can see the products of uh, Uravu. Uh, these are the products uh, which Uravu promotes and uh, they are marketing globally. Uravu has roll up blends and they have uh, 20 patterns, more uh, varieties on that. Uravu Grow Resort is the USP of Uravu Group. Here we go through the organization structure and marketing. Uravu is governed by a board of trustees with 11 trust members from various walk of life. They have online marketing at the same time offline marketing. They have their blog for marketing purpose. This product itself is one of the marketing strategy as being, as being biodegradable product which helps the environment sustainably. 
here we go in detail of Uravu Grow Resort. Uravu main eco-friendly tourism project is Uravu Grow Resort. This is an example of sustainable eco-friendly tourism project, which involves the community to make a people lead to their development. Uravu cottages are built of sustainable materials such as bamboo, wood, and ferro cement. The handicrafts workshop at Uravu supports thousand plus local artisans, provide training around India, and also arranges raw materials for them. Also allows the tourists to experience the culture of Uravu. Uruvu projects are committed to the UN Sustainable Development Goals such as SDG 1, No Poverty, SDG 5, Gender Equality, SDG 8, Jason Work and Economic Growth, SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, SDG 13, Climate Action. Here we will focus mainly on three SDGs which, will, uh, which are contributed by Uruvu. SDG 8, Design Work and Economic Growth. Uruvu indigenous uh, uh, in, uh, community interventions in modernizing, upgrading, and streamlining bamboo based economic activities have tremendously helped to improve bamboo artisans' social status in Kerala. It provides the working opportunity for 1,000 plus rural artisans trained 5,000 plus people, arranges trainings and workshops of bamboo products all over India, and also provides jobs to local peoples. SDG 12, the sustainable model of Uruvu ensures efficient management and consumption of this renewable resource by promoting bamboo plantations, advocating is an ultimate substitute for wood, plastic, and iron. It's developed 500 plus bamboo products, preserving 50 plus species of bamboo varieties, providing programs for students, artisans, and tourists, and all natural lovers who love bamboo and know about the bamboo. Here, Climate Action 13, the environmental benefits of green road equally have, Urubu have a lab um, provision that the experiments are going on and they are exploring more about in the bamboo industry. Bamboo is one of the essential nature substitute for the endangered rainforest hardwoods. Bamboo planned, uh, Urubu planted 12,000 12, plus saplings every year and its biodegradable products are promoting environmental benefits. Also, bamboo nursery helps, in, uh, helps to reduce climate change issues. But bamboo cultivation is not only help the farmers of the community, but also benefits the environment. Cultivation of bamboo in one acre can sequester 10 tons of carbon dioxide annually. Bamboo acts as a natural air purifier. A full grown of bamboo may give rise to 300 kilograms of oxygen annually, and it may be sufficient for a single person for one year. Here comes the methodology. Uh, I have done a qualitative study followed with in-depth interviews. I have interviewed seven respondents, five from the main center and uh, rest of them from their satellite units. Uravu have five satellite units, which is around 30 kilometers of Uravu main organization. Here I have focused only on 17 women uh, employees. These are my results and findings. 80% of women were between the age of group of 40 and 55. They have more than 13 years experience in Orobo itself. They are educated up to 10th standard. The women between the age group of 30, 35 completed their high, higher secondary education. Only a few of participants enrolled for uh, undergraduate uh, course, but unfortunately uh, couldn't complete it. Some were educated up to higher secondary and and some jo uh, joined for graduation and uh, uh, discontinued. Their salary is based on uh, finishing a product. And because of less salary, most of the uh, women joining are discontinuing. 
these are uh, they are happy with the organizational atmosphere the organization is very friendly to the employees organization considers uh, this organization or who consider employees opinion and uh, decision making limitation of the study due to the outbreak of covid 19 access to the uh, participants was limited and uh, therefore could only collect uh, data from 17 respondents. This is the proposed model which I developed uh, like this in tourism activities. If we incorporated bamboo cultivation and products will act as a catalyst to attain SDGs. A more bamboo involvement in uh, tourism, the more chances to attain SDGs. Here, bamboo acts as a mediating variable. Uh, these are um, some of my important references. To conclude, I would like to say that tourism can incorporate bamboo, the green gold, to uplift the communities economically conserve the biodiversity of the environment and also can save our mother earth from climate change issues. Tourism can commit to SDGs as one, two, five, eight, 12 and 13 goals by incorporating and utilizing the significance and benefits of bamboo, the green gold. Thank you for giving this opportunity. It's all to you, Nick. Thank you, Smitha, um, for a wonderful presentation. And I am very amazed at what bamboo can do and how it can be interconnected to the tourism industry, contributing to the SDGs. So we also have some questions for you from the audience. Uh, but before we do that, um, you may unshare your screen so they can see sure, sure. us on screen. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So the first question I have is, what made you specifically study on uh, bamboo in the tourism industry? What was your uh, motivation? Obviously, the benefits of bamboo. The bamboo whole, the plant, whole plant can be utilized in bamboo uh, tourism industry. From cutleries, crockeries, uh, tissues, interiors, constructions, everything we can incorporate. Uh, to tourism industry and it is uh, uh, also grown in all uh, continents so that this plant is uh, available in, uh, globally around globally and uh, also it is uh, considered to be a renewable source to incorporate in tourism industry thank you for that um and in your case study of oro uh where you mentioned they support uh w women uh, tribal women, and I have a question about them. Uh, uh, in your case study, you mentioned that women join the program, but they dis, uh, they discontinue because of low income. They sometimes discontinue because of the low income. How do you think um, we can solve this problem? Uh, do you have any suggestions for Uro to take uh, for the problem of women discontinuing the program because of low income? Sure, definitely. Uh, actually, uh, when I went through the study, what I understood is the uh, age group of women from 40 to 55 year, uh, years, and they have 13 uh, years of experience, because of uh, lower educational background, that they are sticking on that. And also, they are happy with the um, atmosphere of the organization. So they are sticking on the, but they are saying that that time it is sufficient for um, uh, their livelihood, but now it is not sufficient compared to the um, higher uh, expenses uh, that they are facing now. So to solve that, we have to improve the uh, salary of uh, Uravu women. So we can uh, involve more them to the workshops and we can in increase the salary apart from finishing the product. So we can increase their salary, involving them, uh, participate in their exhibitions and uh, workshops and training process. Then to that, we can increase. So they will get an extra income uh, apart from their making of bamboo products. 
Thank you for that, uh, Smitha. And I think uh, our audiences are very fond of bamboo already after your presentation. And I have one question asking about um, what will happen if bamboo goes extinct? Pardon, I didn't get your... So, um, uh, some of our audiences are interested in knowing if bamboo can go extinct. And then maybe you can mention about the uh, growing conditions that bamboo needs um, so that you can talk about extinction of bamboo. Sure, sure. Uh, the most peculiar uh, benefit of bamboo is it can be grown in all a uh, area. Uh, if uh, in deserts also we can uh, uh, grow bamboo because it has the capacity to store water in its columns and uh, roots. If we uh, compare to the uh, a flooded area, it has the capacity to hold the, I mean, stop the soil erosion. So in all places we can uh, grow bamboo. So that is the main peculiarity of bamboo. It's that much environment friendly. Thank you for that answer. Um, so audiences, I don't think we have to worry about bamboo extinct, uh, going extinct. So uh, maybe we can start using bamboo more <laughs> after this webinar. So um, another question that I have here is, um, since Orao Grove Resort is made out of bamboo, and um, how long will the uh, building made out of bamboo last? Urubu, uh, I mean, uh, this bamboo have a very peculiar benefit, which I couldn't uh, mention earlier because it has uh, the ability of anti um, uh benefit. It won't uh, destroy, um, it will stay for uh, more than uh, uh, six and 12 uh, years uh, without uh, any uh, decomposition because it have uh, the ability to resist the fungals and uh, Thank you for that. Um, another question. Um, so after the training sessions in Uro and all the uh, craft making, I believe that there will be some waste uh, from the bamboo handicrafts and other products. And do you know how they manage the waste uh, from those activities? And um, how um, can you tell us how they manage it? Definitely, that is the interesting part because in all industries, the uh, uh, waste products, it will be a burden to the environment, right? Here, they are using these materials for using bioma biomass energy. So the, even the ashes uh, also it is going into an organic uh, fertilizer. So there is no uh, harm to the environment and it is not, uh, using like this purpose. So the entire circle is a very useful product. It is not causing any waste material also. So I think the cycle itself is very sustainable that uh, bamboo doesn't give out any waste. No, not at all. That's why I, I, I was focused in bamboo. I loved bamboo. Okay, That's thank you. For, thank you for sharing that. Um, so another question uh, we have on here is on a large scale, uh, won't the cost vector be a challenge? And uh, what will be ways that we can actually get people to shift to using uh, bamboo? So would bamboo cost us more in implementing it in the tourism industry? Or would it um, cost us less uh, so that it is more sustainable for the tourism industry. It is the cost is very less and it is affordable also, and the cultivation from the the main important thing is that from the cultivation itself, uh, it's uh, sequester uh, carbon and uh, it's helping the environment. The interesting part is after the processing and product, if it is converted in bamboo is converted into a product of in uh, in the form of construction and all. That time also it is uh, absorbing carbon. That time also it is absorbing. That is the industry part. And it is very uh, less cost because it is uh, available uh, in all you know, places. So almost it takes six years to get a product or a grown up uh, bamboo. So it is uh, easily available and uh, less uh, cost effective. 
Thank you for that um, answer. Uh, I have a follow up question because the reason why our audience is asking about this is because um, I think it's because um, uh, the most of the bamboo uh, in the world right now is produced in China and it is um, uh, through importation from China that other countries get bamboo from and the cost of importation would um, higher the cost of them uh, of other countries implementing bamboo in their tourism industry. So um, the question I have for you is, how do you think the case of Oro, your case study, can be implemented to other rural areas in other countries so that we can reduce the cost in importation and we can reduce carbon footprint uh, coming out of the importation? Definitely. What Oiro is doing is they are cultivating this bamboo in their nursery and also they have the plantations. And uh, this uh, plantation is not enough for their making their products. So we have Kerala um, a Bamboo Project Corporation and they are taking bamboo from them also. So they are uh, most of the uh, in uh, Comparing in Kerala, they are uh, taking bamboos from that uh, co cooperative projects because they have a huge cultivation system. So they are also uh, cultivating, so the availability is, is more. And uh, Uruguay is helping the cluster units because the uh, organization who are interested to uh, do, I mean, uh, promote uh, bamboo, they are. Uh, helping the artisans by providing training. They are giving them, if they have no material, they are giving the materials. They are uh, giving uh, the workshops and sharing the products. So they are promoting uh, this uh, biodegradable products to globally. They have uh, uh, international market also. They are uh, having customers, uh, they have high demand. In this time of COVID also, the, it was interesting. My study went on the time of COVID and they were saying that well, they were struggling in that time also, that they have the customers. They are they have the customers in that time also. So it was cost effective and it is almost um, benefited in all season. So even if we consider the um, cost that uh, goes with implementation of bamboo in uh, the specific region, um, if we look at the outcomes and the benefits, I believe that it can compensate for the cost uh, that happens uh, with the implementation of bamboo in their tourism industry, right? Yes, definitely. Okay, so uh, for our last question, I would like to ask the same thing as earlier. How do you think youth can contribute to the SDGs that you highlighted in your presentation? So which are SDG number eight, SDG number 12, and SDG number 13? SDG number uh, eight, we are providing the community a decent work and uh, we are giving because if we compare it to the tourism industry, we have season, off season, peak season at all. Here it is not the the continuous, the com community is getting the um, work, so they are economically safe. And compared to the goal 12, uh, if we take the 12, they are cultivating, that are consuming, and there is no waste products or anything, they are maintaining that. And also, uh, the finally, uh, the goal 30, uh, climate issues, uh, because if we take that, it is a good air purifier. It, it reduces pollution and uh, it reduces the plastic and uh, that non-renewable uh, resources. So it protects the climate and uh, it reduces global warming also. Thank you for that answer. I think it is very important that uh, youth are educated about this information and uh, the sole purpose and uh, objective of this Pada Youth webinar is to let you guys know that there are young researchers um, in our very own uh, Pada Youth community who are taking initiative to make a difference in the tourism industry. And I hope uh, you guys were able to learn a thing or two from this presentation. So thank you for all your answers and thank you to both of our speakers for their presentations. So I hope all the youth in the audience were listening to Vicon and Smitha as they showed us how they as youth themselves are taking initiative 
to study on particular SDGs and trying to be the change makers in the tourism industry. So before we end, I would like to share my screen really quick again to introduce to everyone the PADA Youth Membership. So um, the PADA Youth team has remodeled the membership structure and is now back with all new PADA Youth Membership. The new PADA Youth Membership provides support to youth with the exclusive benefits for you to continue aspiring to be the future leaders of the tourism industry. So the new PADA Youth Program, uh, PADA Youth Membership rather, is for all youth around the world in the age range of 18 to 25 with various benefits. First, gain knowledge, building your professional network, speaking opportunities, and building your portfolio. Most importantly, certificate of participation for this webinar and upcoming ones is only given to our PADA youth members. So this is your chance now to sign up. For student chapter members, please get the respective discount codes from your lecturer advisors. So I would like to thank all the attendees for being a great supporter of PADA Youth Program. As a token of gratitude, we have prepared an early bird discount just for you. For the month of August, you can use the discount code shown on screen to avail 20% off of your PADA Youth membership for the first year, which will bring you various benefits. So scan the QR code and join the international PADA Youth community today. So this has been Nick, your PADA Youth Ambassador. Thank you everyone and have a good day.